Hello, it is Thursday, February 23rd, 2023. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Thursday puzzle today, so we'll have some sort of interesting or intricate theme today. I, I do always look forward to Thursday, and uh, I'm always curious to see what this week's constructor is up to with the theme, so we'll see how that goes. And this interesting or, or intricately themed edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by Jake Rodkin, Joe Percy, Joseph Schwalbach, and, as always, the invaluable Timothy Mark, and the indomitable Shoalmaster. So thank you so much to the five of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign, for their generous support in supporting this channel and bringing us this series. I do very much appreciate that. The uh, contributors to the Patreon campaign are the reason this series uh, goes on, and I, that does mean quite a lot to me. So thank you if you're one of them, a benefactor or any supporter of the Patreon campaign. And if you'd like to become one, you can head over to patreon.com slash daily solve or follow a link in the description field underneath the video. And as a benefactor, you'll get the daily solve. Let's check the crosses mug. And as any patron, you'll get access to all of the bonus videos that have gone up on the channel to date, as well as the new ones that go up each week. And that will include today, um, soon, right about the time this video is published, the most recent acrostic puzzle that I solved will go up on the Patreon feed, and that was a very puzzling, very sort of, um, uh, sort of, how do I put it? It was sort of a, it was a very crunchy solve. I really had to dig into the individual letters and infer things about the words. I really enjoyed it. Um, hope you do as well if you're a patron. Uh, so that's over on the Patreon feed, or will be momentarily, and, um, other than that, you can join the Daily Solve Discord chat server. There's a link in the description field to that as well. And please do join, uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel if you've not yet done so. Thanks to everybody who's done that as well. All right, let's get on to today's uh, video. I completely forgot to look into Joe Dini's history as a constructor, but this, <laughs> but this crossword is by him. And it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. So let's start solving and see what's in store today. So zeros and ones in computing. Well, they're binary. So that could be, that's the binary sort of counting system. Um, but what does that mean? Does that mean we have a rebus or what? I don't know. Basic training. Uh, by rebus, I mean entering more than one puzzle. Uh, sorry, more than one letter in a cell, but I might not explain that until I know I need to. Basic training. Providers of assistance after a crash informally. Don't know. Oh, oh, maybe a computer crash. IT gurus or something like that. No, IT something. But that could be the beginning of the could be the beginning of binary. Is there something here? Basic training. Basic training. Conversely. Oh, conversely in a text could be on the other hand, abbreviated. And beginning to end. A short E as opposed to a long E, the literal beginning to the word end. That E, end. Oh, right. Sorry. This isn't binary. It's just bits as in. Sorry, I had to cough there briefly. Um, it's bits, as in eight bits in a byte, and um, and so on, in sort of storing of computer information. There we go. All right, so the zeros and ones are bits. No uh, rebus after all. Didn't have to explain that. So providers of assistance, right, it's the IT people. It is such fun to fool the folks and make them butts of harmless jokes. Um... I don't know. Iambic sextameter, <laughs> arguably. Um, but I'm not sure what is this. And blank research, info on a political adversary, oppo research, I think that's called opposition research. So top IT people? Is that really what it is? I wouldn't have thought that to be informal enough to deserve the informally label. It might not be right. And basic training, oh, boot camp in the military, for instance. Okay. 
lay of the land is terrain. And nail polish applications are probably ends with an S as a rule, you might say. And a sleep study diagnosis could be apnea. You can have a, a sleep apnea uh, impairing your good sleep. Okay. January honoree could be MLK, Martin Luther King, who has a, a national holiday in his honor in the United States. What is top ranks? What on earth is this? Oh, nail polish applications coats. I see. So one coat, two coat, three coats are, are the successive applications of nail polish. Um, this must be something theme related. Top ranks. I don't understand what that means just yet. Robin... Robin Roberts Network. Not sure. Sweet Italian Bubbly, Asti. And without a pause is to no end or something? Or so, I don't know. Not, not sure. Danny of the NBA, not sure. Hair problem is hair problem. Not sure. Whenever I need to get a bump, I find it right there at the top. Okay, so this is another one of these, and I don't I don't understand what's going on with it yet. Um we'll have to it, it's it's gotta be something theme related. So badgers to nag or to bother somebody, it's probably nag. Uh, I don't think it's the animal. I think it's the um the verb that means to sort of bother someone and, and get get on their back, get on their case. Um, but there might be another possibility as to what that is. Hair problem. Snags, maybe? Could could we have a plural answer to a singular clue like that? Doesn't seem very likely. Let's go over here. Drive-through conveniences. Mics, maybe? As in the microphone used to I don't know. I don't really think that would be a good answer to drive through conveniences. It's a bit odd. Mysterious. What was this? Oh, I didn't look at this. Symbol for an angle in math. Symbol for an angle in math. I'm not sure. Is there a name for the degree symbol? This is probably going to be a Greek letter for used in some context that I'm I can't bring to mind off the top of my head. Oh, and here's another one of these. For me, the Super Bowl's a bore, but watching these is fun galore. I'm really annoyed that I can't think of the holiday marking the exodus from Egypt. Pesach? Symbol for the animal uh, angle in math. Robin, I don't have no idea who Robin Roberts is. Wearing, if you're wearing something, you're clad in it. Clothed doesn't really work actually as tightly. Clad in is plausible. Couleur de la Seine. So this is the color of the Seine, the river in uh, in the French language. So bleu for blue, I would think that would be. Robin Roberts Network, maybe NBC or CBS or TBS or ABC. Oh boy, it could really be quite a few, couldn't it? Oh, but it's going to be a vowel. Oh, it is Pesach. Okay, there we go. And Robin Roberts Network is ABC, I suppose. Maybe maybe a news anchor or something. Okay. Oh, symbol for an angle in math. Maybe theta. That, that's very plausible. I have no idea what's going on with these. Exams a must for future... Oh, wait a second. This could be MCATs. Exams a, future, exams a must for future docs. Make sure your answers fill the box. So are we? maybe we're combining to sort of taking these couplets and each one is a single clue? So does MCATs... Is that what, that's what those are? Exams for future doctors, I think? Make sure your answers fill the box. Tomcats. Why is that? Make sure your answers fill the box. Why does that one work? T-O, what does that mean? What 
was this other one? It is such, f oh, pranks. It is, oh, two pranks. Two MCATs. Oh. Two, whenever I need to get a bump, I find it right there at the pump. Two gas togas? I wonder if this means the gas pump where you fill up your car. So they are all going to start with T-O, it looks like. Two pranks. Oh, it's an ode. It's an ode to pranks. Oh, wow. This, so this is, this, is, <laughs> this is the sort of putative, this is the sensible um, kind of title of this little couplet, this little poem that I suppose it's a couplet that begins a poem because there's, a, there's an ellipsis here suggesting more, more to come. So uh, often odes are named to whatever, to their subject. And uh, the ode is, of course, the official poetic form of the New York Times crossword. So it's about time we had a theme like this. Oh, that's, that's very, very good. That, that's great. Uh, I see. So this, it's, not, it's not that half of this is about MCATs and the other half isn't. It's that the whole thing is, is the beginning of an ode to MCATs, to, to the, the future doc exams. Exams are must for future docs. Make sure your answers fill the box. Begins the poem to MCATs. That's great. And then here to gas. So whenever you need a bump in your car, I suppose, of gas, you find it there at the pump. All right, let's keep going. Without a pause, to no, to no end, no. I keep reversing this for some reason. Badger, oh, it, it looks like it is nag, if that's togas. Family man, father, or... Not sure. Oh, maybe a mob, mob person, family man. Not sure. Frozen sister Elsa is one of the sisters from Frozen. And Danny of the NBA, still not sure about that. Arnie? I don't know. Hair problem. Oh, snarl. There we go. And without a pause. Oh, in one, in one go or in one take or in one run? Not sure about that. Yeah, I'm not sure. Guess posted at a gate in brief. Guess. Guess is a slightly strange way to put it. I assume this means a gate at an airport. Estimated time of arrival or departure. Probably departure at a gate. But it really could be either. Sometimes it is one or the other. Without a pause. In... Oh, sorry. That was an embarrassing spelling error. In... I interpreted the word on as the word one, and I forgot. So it is in one go. Of course. Sorry about that. That was, must have seemed inexplicable that I thought that didn't fit. Blank me deconvenant. Oh uh, boy, I don't, I don't. This is a Pacini aria, and I have no idea what it is. And my Italian is too non-existent to, to serve me well in terms of inferring. I don't know. Okay, for me, the Super Bowl's a bore, but watching these is fun galore. Okay, so to, okay, to something that isn't the Super Bowl... I don't know. It does says it does say these, so it probably ends with an S. Unnerve is to shake somebody or to I'm not sure. Okay, let's keep going. Welcome in a yoga class. Don't know. Is there something that people say to welcome you in a yoga class, or is this a sort of object that welcomes you? I'm not sure. Prop for the Riddler or Willy Wonka. Um, Willy Wonka has a cane. Does the Riddler have a cane? I can't really remember. Maybe. Yes, I think so. Batman villain. All right. That's cane, I suppose. Mysterious is eerie or something. An avid flower lover sees a fall bouquet that's full of these. So that will be two as well. And probably some, probably a particular flower, I imagine, but maybe something else. Drive through conveniences. Oh, drive through ATMs, maybe. Um, I suppose that's a thing. Mysterious. Oh, arcane, perhaps. Mysterious, not in the sense of uh, of sort of eerie, but more mysterious in the sense of containing you know ancient knowledge, that sort of thing, possibly. Disturb is. What? Don't disturb me. Don't rouse me. 
snack item that's green in the middle. A mint something? Oh, disturb could be royal if this were a mint something. And enjoys a leisurely weekend morning, say sleeps in. There we go. So welcome in a yoga class. Still not sure about that. Leading. If you're leading, you're on top in um, sort of leaderboard situation. Draft picks could be beers. You could have beers on tap on draft. And a rowdy crowd is a mob. So two, oh, two asters maybe? A full bouquet. Of, asters are flowers. Oh, namaste is the welcome in a yoga class. Okay, right, of course. And then a um, oh, mint Oreo. So here we have, uh, well, a variant of the official snack cookie of the New York Times, the official sandwich cookie of the New York Times crossword, the Oreo. A variant sort, a mint Oreo. And leading is on top, right? We saw that, drafts, picks, beers. Big name in outdoor gear, REI, which is a U.S. cooperative um, outdoor and sort of sporting goods store. Dons, if you don something, you put it on. So Dons puts on, and that sort of reminds me of one of these we had somewhere else. Uh, I don't know, can't remember. In any case, guest posted at a gate in brief, right? ETA or ETD, family man. Brando, <laughs> because he played a mobster in The Godfather. I don't think that's right. It's obviously not because it's not enough letters. Um, this area is actually tough for me here. I'm going to have to figure out how to get, how to make some progress. Unnerve to a Paul? Don't think so. Short-sighted, say. And wanders around an airport in brief. Oh, wander. People who use wands? I don't think I've ever heard them described as wanders, but I, I think the, the question mark is alluding to the pun around wanders. So you'd, you'd look at this and you'd think it would mean sort of roams around an airport, but what on earth would that mean? Yeah, there's not a word for that. Um, so people who brandish wands in an airport are the TSA Transport Security Agency Administration, which was in the puzzle just yesterday or the day before as well, actually. And the in brief lets us know it'll be an abbreviation, which the answer is. Fathers and Sons, Turgenev novel. And short-sighted, say, un... Oh, I still can't see it. That's so annoying. To unnerve. And Seinfeld actor... Jerry Seinfeld? Surely not, no. Oh, no, Jerry is Jerry's father's character? Name Jerry somebody? Oh, I can't remember. Oh, that's so annoying. I mean, <laughs> it's absurd that I even started typing Jerry Seinfeld. I'm glad it didn't fit because I might have actually put it in there. It obviously isn't going to be the answer because the answer is sitting right there in the clue and they're not going to do that. That was absurd. Uh, in any case... Um, I just can't think. Anyway, a hospital has many specialized places where patients patients recover in bright, cheerful spaces. Two wards, maybe? Uh, two wards, right. And I don't think I... It didn't... This was probably obvious to everybody, but I don't think I explicitly mentioned that the two, you know, whatever, two, the two title of each of these also creates a single word or phrase unto itself. So, um, Toga's... Of course, Tom Katz, top ranks towards, um, oh, right, toasters. I never read that one, I don't think. Uh, so there we go. Um, that is a nice little detail as well and makes the puzzle. That's that's what mis created the misdirection early on. Is it looked like these were their own sort of complete answers. All right, so two wards, a hospital has many specialized places where patients recover in bright, cheerful spaces. And to unnerve somebody is to spook them. Okay, there we go. What was this again? Oh, right. The Super Bowl's a bore. Oh, boy. Okay, and I do. I should remember it needs to be one word, but I'm not sure how I'm going to make progress on this. So this is ETAs or ETDs. Um, 
and family man is... If it were a D, it could be sort of grandpa or something like that. Does that help with this? Yeesh, I'm not sure. This could be Toka's again, but I don't think it is. I don't think watching Toka's is fun galore. Um, I'm not sure. Okay, we'll have to keep looking around. I'll just need I'll need to come to some sort of inspiration there. Um, colorful garment. Oh, damasks. There we go. That's a um, I think both a fabric and also a uh, a, a garment sort of associated with that fabric. Short sighted, say un. Oh, maybe not. Oh, sorry. Maybe damask with a e. Colorful garment. Short sighted, unwise. If you're short sighted in a metaphorical sense, is it damasky? Maybe it is. Okay, I don't think I'm. Don't think I'm familiar with that. That particular configuration of this. So I guess that's just my. That's on. That's on me. Um. All right. So. Oh, this doesn't look right. Something's wrong. I'm doing something wrong here. Maybe, maybe this is completely wrong, and I was just on the wrong track with that. I think it must be. Boy, this is annoying. Navy vessel in 2000 headlines. USS something, probably? or It's probably USS something for United States ship. So what am I getting wrong here? Oh, a dashiki is a colorful garment. Right, okay, so this has absolutely nothing to do with Damascus, and I was just, that was just a, a, yeah, I was just on the wrong track. Okay, fair enough. Something it might be good to break. Break a habit? Maybe it's good to break a bad habit. Oh, Berkeley's Bears in Brief. I know this. This is Cal. This is the University of California at Berkeley, which is the school that I attended, and the Golden Bears are the, uh, that's the, the um, athletic teams. And Cal is how the school is referred to because it was the first university, it was the original University of California. Oh, Jerry Stiller, Ben Stiller's father. That's that's what I was looking for that whole time. Seinfeld actor Jerry, that it was just an infuriating, <laughs> infuriating little missing link in my brain somehow. Okay, oh, I don't have the words that rightly commend Cerulean birds and Harry's best friend to something. This will be, wow, I'm very curious what this is going to be. They, the constructor kept the kind of most impressive construction to the end. Oh, and that does make me notice that this was, this is a, a crossword, a grid that is symmetrical about a vertical axis, which is unusual. Usually we have diagonal rotational symmetry, but in this case we have um, rotation around the vertical axis, meaning if you folded the crossword sort of in half along that vertical line halfway through the grid, uh, the black cells would remain identically disposed. Uh, they would they would mirror up to one another, match up. And that has been done clearly to enable this one single very long theme answer uh, without any mirrored version of itself of equivalent length. So we'll get there eventually. I wish I could I wish I could just jump right to that. That would be great, but I don't know that I can. Beyond strange, weird or eerie, eerier beyond strange? No, eerier wouldn't fit. We need two E's at the beginning. Beyond strange, not sure. Oh, alien, maybe. Long time Fiat model. That's a Fiat, that's a, that's a car make, Italian car. Um, Uno, is a Fiat Uno? That sort of sounds familiar. In again, uh, yes, if something's in again, it's retro. It's kind of once again in. It's once again hip. And pitch, tar, oh, right, tar, and so the substance, tar, pitch. Um, and oh, USS Cole, that's what was, the, what was that about in 2000? I do not remember at all what the actual news event was, but the sort of name is vaguely familiar, USS Cole. So, okay, so what is this? Two Pinto, two 
Oh, I'm just not, I'm not on it. Oh. I wonder if it's two different something to something to something else. That would be interesting, but I, I have no idea if that's what's going on. Oh, blue birds. Cerulean birds. Blue, no, but we wouldn't say uh, blue jays. Yeah, we wouldn't use the word birds in there twice, and it wouldn't fit anyway. Um, to, oh, Toronto Blue Jays. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, and I think the Toronto Blue Jays were also in the puzzle just in the last few days because I remember someone in the comments uh, who was pleased that their team was being referenced. So, to, so Toronto Blue Jays. <laughs> oh, to Ron, to Blue Jays. Harry, Harry's best friend, Ron? What does that mean? To Ron, to Blue Jays. <laughs> uh, I don't know the words that rightly commend to really birds and Harry's best friend. So it's sort of a double ode. It's an ode to Ron, I guess, comma, to Blue Jays. That's really clever. <laughs> uh, I wonder if that was what sort of started this off or if, if, if after having come up with the idea, it, this sort of was introduced as a as a challenge that couldn't be resisted to Ron, to Blue Jays. That's very good. Uh, okay. Well, I'm going to have to solve this at some point. Oh, I didn't look. Oh, I didn't look at this. Madres Hermana. So this is um, mother's brother who's uh, a sister is a tia, one's aunt. There we go. Okay, well... That was sorry for not looking at that. That was at least helpful. So I thought I was wondering if this was going to be Gia, and maybe it is, but maybe not, because what would that be here? Family man. So what did I say? Grandpa, but then I didn't know how the rest of it works because what would that doesn't doesn't look like it adds up to anything. Oh, granddad though that would be Gia, and this would be estimated time of departure, and this would be Toads. No, it's two ads. Sorry, of course. Oh, I see. For me, the Super Bowl's a bore, but watching these is fun galore. I see. So I don't enjoy the Super Bowl, but I enjoy watching the advertisements that break up the Super Bowl because they're famously, you know, lavish and clever and whatever else. All right. So Family Man, Granddad, and then Danny Ainge, I guess. Okay. So I'm not familiar with that name, but I'm going to assume it's correct because the rest of this looks like it all works out. Boy, I can't believe I didn't look at this clue for so long. Sorry about that. All right, pattern that represents a clan. Oh, tartan, a, a Scottish clan. And like the German cake, Zweibelkuchen. Zweibelkuchen, do I, do I know that? Not sure. Shortcuts for some repetitive tasks, macros. So um, it's pro you don't hear as much about this anymore. It was sort of a thing in the... 90s computing, I really remember macros were talked about all the time, sort of um, configuring keys to serve as a kind of set of tasks or key combination. So you could, uh, you know, say, do this now, and it would then process it with all the subtasks. I mean, we, we have all sorts of versions of that now. I just don't hear the word macro being used in that context as much as what I meant. Diarmas, who played Madeline Monroe, Anna Diarmas. Um, played Marilyn Monroe in that film that came out last year. Was it Blonde? And then actress Christina Ricci. And oniony, I suppose, like the German cake survival cooking. Finance initials, the New York Stock Exchange, I suppose, is a um, is a stock exchange, so would be appropriate finance initials and source of many an ode in brief. Oh, that's a good, this is a good little clue to tie into the theme, even though it's not expressly part of the theme. So sure, many odes are anon accredited to anonymous or anon in brief. And a drumstick part is a cone. So an ice cream drumstick, I suppose, as opposed to a chicken drumstick or a literal drumstick used to play the drums. Okay. Not quite closed. If, some, if a door is not quite closed, it's ajar. And traffic. So it's funny that drumsticks, so the, the ice cream sort of version of drumstick is named after the poultry version of drumstick, but that in itself is obviously named after 
the thing used to play a drum. I never really thought about the fact that the ice cream one is actually two full degrees away from what the word means. Anyway, a traffic circle, a rotary, or... Does this mean a roundabout? Is that what this is referring to? Is that another name for a roundabout or rotary? I'm not sure. To be behind in a way, to lag or to owe money. There we go. This looks like Dwayne. Yes, actor Johnson, a.k.a. The Rock, is Dwayne Johnson, The Rock. And faculties, if you're in full command of your faculties, you're in full command of your senses. Dark force. I'm not sure offhand. Former education secretary Duncan, Arnie Duncan, was Obama's education secretary, I think. And some bar stock could be rye, rye whiskey. So this does look like rotary, doesn't it? Oh, Satan is a dark force. Right, okay. For some reason, I was just thinking of these in a kind of syllabically <laughs> incorrect way. Who knows why? There we go. All right, and that was the Thursday crossword. Really good, really good theme. I enjoyed that immensely, I have to say. So let's go over our odes. Oops, oops, sorry about that. Whenever I need to get a bump, I find it right there at the pump. An ode to gas, um, camouflaged by the word togas. For me, the Super Bowl's a bore, but watching these is fun galore. An ode to ads, toads. Exams a must for future docs. Make sure your answers fill the box. Is an ode to MCATs. That's, that's very clever. Uh, getting something in with these letters that don't appear, they would be able to read smoothly um, because it's a uh, obviously an initialism. And anyway, two, M two MCATs camouflaged by Tomcats. A hospital has many specialized places where patients recover in bright, cheerful spaces. I, I like that this one um, uses a different meter than most of them do. Um, a hospital has many special. I mean, it's a bit, it's a bit rough metrically, but it, but it works. I think, I think we can all give it, give it that. Uh, anyway, that's an ode to wards camouflaged by towards. And I don't have the words that rightly commend cerulean birds and Harry's best friend. This one is a better example of breaking the metrical sort of iambic pattern. Um, I don't remember, I can't remember all the terms for the different types of metrical feet, but this, this one uses one that is in blocks of three syllables each. So I don't have the words that rightly commend Cerulean birds and Harry's best friend. It's, it's good. Um, anyway, Toronto Blue Jays camouflage. Well, Toronto Blue Jays camouf camouflage is the completely absurd to Ron to Blue Jays. Completely ridiculous. I suppose it's a bit of a, maybe you could argue it's a bit of a cheat that Blue Jays is you know, Blue Jays itself actually remains in both the sort of camouflaged reading and all the surface read and also the ode reading. So that's a, it's a bit of a, a shortcut there, I suppose. But I think the whole thing is so absurd and amusing that I, I, I'm not bothered by it. And we had some of the downs as well. It is such fun to fool the folks and make them butts of harmless jokes. That That's a very classic sounding sort of Shakespearean couplet there. I like that a lot. And that is an ode to pranks or uh, camouflaged by top ranks. An avid flower lover sees a fall bouquet that's full of these. And that is an ode to asters camouflaged in toasters, which for some reason I find funny. The mundanity, I suppose, of toasters compared to this ode to, to flowers. Anyway, there we go. That was it. That was the Thursday crossword. Really enjoyed that theme and enjoyed how completely baffling it was until I understood what was going on. So well done to Joe Dini. And, and that's that. Uh, there weren't really any, well, <laughs> the main, the main corrections to yesterday's puzzle, I suppose, were people, uh, pointing out the inconsistency of my claims about, uh, the sound a lion makes and the onomatopoeia of the word roar, which I gather um, it was not so, not as different as I was making it out to be. So you can read some some good, some amusing comments about that on yesterday's uh, video. But with that, I'm going to wrap up today's. So I hope you enjoyed it. I did. And I'll be back tomorrow for the Friday crossword, of course, when we dispense with a the theme and go straight for solving. Uh, well, solving with no uh, clever mechanics like this one in today's puzzle. We're just going to answer some 
clues and put them in the grid. So join me for that. And until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Thursday. Take care.